Hello, this is the section on classification of matter. Uh, we'll start off with chemistry. It's the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Now, matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Now, a substance is a form of matter with a definite composition and distinct properties. A substance is pure. We have gold, we have silicon, we have nitrogen. Now, a mixture is something that is not pure. It is a combination of two or more pure substances. Now, each of those substances retains their distinct identities, their distinct properties, but combined, they are a mixture. Now, a homogeneous mixture, uh, a good example would be sugar and water, salt and water, think of Kool-Aid. Uh, it's a composition of a mixture that is the same throughout. Soft drink, milk, milk is emulsified fat and water, but it just looks like one face. It is homogeneous, one face. A heterogeneous mixture is a composition that is not uniform throughout. Think of marbles in water. You see that they're a mixture, but you see that there are two or more distinct phases. It is heterogeneous, multiple phases. How about Lucky Charms? Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms would be a good one. I love Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms would be a good one. Lucky Charms is a heterogeneous mixture because you got your Luckies and your Charms. You do. You have Luckies and Charms. Yep. Now, a heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture can be separated into those original pure substances by physical means. Now, physical means, like distillation, or the use of a magnet to separate iron filings from sand, are means in which you don't have to chemically change the substances. If I took a bunch of salt, threw it in water, a homogeneous mixture, I could separate that by the physical means of, let's say, evaporating that water. The two are the same after the separation. That's how mixtures can be separated. Now, an element is a type of substance. Remember, substance is pure. That cannot be separated by physical means. Instead, it has to be separated by chemical means. Now, the difference between separation of physical means versus chemical means is that in chemical means, you have to change the identity of the substance. Physical means you do not change the identity of the substance. Now, these elements are pure substances that cannot be broken down by normal means. All of your elements are pure substances. You have naturally occurring elements, and then you have some towards the bottom of the periodic table that are man-made and been created by scientists. That don't forget that technetium, too. That's right in the middle of the periodic table, element number 42 or 43. Sorry, I can't see from here. Yeah, 43. That stuff's crazy. A couple common symbols. We're going to talk about symbol writing in chemistry. You can see that the first letter of all these elemental symbols is they're capitalized. If there's only one letter, that letter is also capitalized. If there happens to be a second letter in the chemical symbol, that letter is going to be lowercase. Now, thinking of a, another type of pure substance, or we had elements, and now we have compounds. Compounds is a substance composed of multiple atoms multiple atoms of different elements that are chemically united. And when they say fixed proportions, that means that they have definite proportions. H2O, water, for example, you have fixed proportions of two hydrogens and one oxygen. That is an example of a compound. Compounds can only be separated by chemical means. We'll stick with water, for example. If I wanted to separate hydrogen from water, this is the common, this is commonly known in, uh, in hydrogen fuel cells. You can run electrodes through water and separate the hydrogen out to be burned in a combustion engine. 
to separate a compound, you need to separate them by chemical means. You need to change the identity of the substance. If you've separated hydrogen from water, from its counterpart oxygen and water, you can only separate them by changing it. And that change is irreversible. A uh, good example that your book gave was an egg trying to separate different components out from an egg. Now, what you commonly do at your home is you would boil or fry an egg. Now, you can't reverse that change. Sorry. You can't reverse that change, and it is the only way to separate different components. Mr. I wouldn't Man want to Friday, anyway. I would just want to eat the egg. Just eat the Mr. egg. Man Friday, I would just eat the egg. Now we're going to talk about ways to classify matter. Uh, ways in, to pull everything that we just learned together. Now matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. That is the overlying term for things that we're going to be dealing with in this class. If anyone tells you uh, why chemistry matters, just go, everything's made of matter. Chemistry study matter. That's why matter matters. So listen to your chemistry teacher. Matter has two main... Can we, Mr. Crisani, can we see the, the arrow? Can they see the arrow? Yes, they can. They, they can. can. See okay, yes, good. if you move that, yes, they can see it. Now, we have mixtures and pure substances. Remember, mixtures are two or more pure substances that can be separated by physical means. Physical means being evaporation, separation using a magnet, some sort of distillation, things that you... Which is based on boiling point, of course. It's based off boiling point, of course. And then we have pure substances that cannot be separated by physical methods, which means that they can only be separated by changing the identity of the substance after, uh, after its chemical change. Now, mixtures are of the two types, homogeneous, remember, Kool-Aid, and heterogeneous, Think of, what was it, what was it, the cereal that you had? Lucky, Lucky Charms. Charms, Lucky Charms, it's oh, heterogeneous, yeah. there's lots of different parts. They can be separated by physical means, you can physically pick them out. Or maybe the Captain Crunch with the Crunch Berries. Maybe Captain Crunch with the Crunch Berries. I like those. Pure substances, let's think of elements. Elements are what are on a periodic table. Those cannot be separated by normal physical means, they can only be broken apart by chemical changes, splitting atoms. Or compounds. Compounds like water. How do you separate hydrogen from water? You have to chemically change it. Now that we've talked about matter, we want to talk about states of matter. There are three states, major states of matter, that we are going to be investigating uh, throughout the course of this year. First of which is a solid. You can see that this solid has a set shape. And a set arrangement of those particles, see how they're nicely packed together in a specific arrangement. Yes, sp sp specific, sp sp specific arrangement. Specific That's arrangement. That's what I'm trying to say, specific arrangement. Now, if we're looking at this solid versus the liquid, the change that you'll see in a liquid is that you have your atoms arranged to fill the set. Uh, sorry. You have your atoms arranged without a set shape. It'll take the shape of the container, but it has a very, very definite volume. 10 milliliters of water is going to be 10 milliliters of water. Then you have a gas. Now, oops, sorry guys. A gaseous state of matter involves taking the shape of whatever container you have and filling that entire container. Now, if we had an animation, you would see that the gas particles would be moving the fastest. Your liquid particles would be moving a little slower, but still a little bit more than the vibrations that you would see in a solid. Those would be the slowest moving particles. Set volume. Mark the bird, please call extension 1131. Set volume fills the volume of the container for gas. If we wanted to look at taking a hot, uh, when they mean by hot poker, that's what you would poke a fire with. I'd say we skip that slide. We'll skip it. Let's How many go. kids have hot pokers at home? Nobody. Nobody. Okay. 
Now let's go in types of changes. We talked about what would be a physical change and what would be a chemical change. Now we're going to go in a little more detail into that. Now a physical change, remember the examples we gave. Ice melting, sugar dissolving in water. We also said distillation, separating things by their boiling point. Filtration. A physical change doesn't alter the composition or identity of a substance. Mixtures can be separated by these changes. Now, pure substances, compounds, or elements can only be separated by chemical changes. Now, chemical changes alter the composition of a substance. It changes it forever. And when I was talking about hydrogen fuel cells, if you want to get hydrogen from water, you change it the identity of those substances. You have pure oxygen and you have pure hydrogen. You no longer have water. Yep. What it does is it takes those particles which are previously bound to each other, separates them, rearranges them, and sticks them back together in a new way to form the new substance. Now, talking about substances, we're going to be talking about different properties. Now, properties, as you know from physics, are things that we are going to, that are characteristic of certain substances things that we measure in this class, things that we use to gather data about different characteristics of certain substances. Now, an extent, extensive property depends on how much matter is being considered. An example of an extensive property would be mass. How much matter or how much of a certain sample that you have is going to dictate the mass of that sample. Length, volume, other examples. Now, an intensive property is a property that it doesn't matter how much of the material, material you are using. An intensive property is going to be the same whether you have a little tiny sample, like a gram, versus a kilogram. An example of an intensive property is density. A vial of water has the same density as a swimming pool of water. Temperature, the measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance. A vial of water at 20 degrees has the same temperature as a swimming pool of water at 20 degrees. And therefore they're going to have the same average kinetic energy. And I think, I think we'd have to put a little food dye, but if we put food dye in both samples they'd have the same color. We could have a big, let's just call it, green's my favorite color, so we'll go green. is good. A green swimming pool full of green water will have the same color as a vial of that green water. I promise it's not algae, just food color. It's not algae, just food color. M matter? Yeah, matter what's, matters. What's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry. Matter. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So what is mass? Mass is a measure of the quantity of matter. How much stuff does it contain? How much stuff does it possess? That's what matter is. I don't think we're supposed to be going on to that slide yet. But that's okay. We can talk about this. So, if something has mass, it basically is how much matter it contains. I know in physics, they talk about the moment of inertia and its mass being the measure of inertia. But here in chemistry, we, we really kind of focus more on how much stuff that something possesses, okay? How much matter. Um, the basic unit of matter, or mass, excuse me, is the kilogram. Kilogram is a pretty big unit. And so more often we're going to work with grams. And we see that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams, which is the same as 1 times 10 to the third. Now you guys are going to see that we're using this term SI. When we have an SI unit, those are the standard units for something, a property, that we measure. In this case, we have an extensive property, depends on the amount of substance, like mass. A bunch of smart guys got together in a room and they figured the standard units that we would report mass in. SI is a standard unit. Weight. Weight deals with gravity and the force of gravity. So weight is the force of gravity that is exerted on an object. Weight is dependent upon the object's mass, but not the other way around. Mass is not dependent upon weight. Weight is dependent upon mass. They're technically two different things. Because remember, mass measures how much matter something possesses, where weight really measures the force of gravity exerted upon that object. 
So if you were, say, here versus the moon, the mass would be the same, but the weight would change dramatically. Yeah, don't worry about that. All right, I think we're, I think we're at the end of this video. All right. So I think that's it for this one. It might right. be a little on the long side. If it is, break it up into smaller sections. Don't watch the whole thing at once, okay, because we don't want you to get overloaded with too much information. So I hope you uh, find this video helpful, and we'll see you guys in September. See you in September. Actually, August. Sorry about that, August.